Indian National Security Advisor Ajit Kumar Doval was in Israel on March 11 to meet Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. Why did this meeting take place? That's the on point. We will, we will take you to a person who will decode this meeting for us and his name is Aditya Rajkol, Executive Editor, News 9 Live. Aditya, I will waste no time on this. Koi bhumika ni banegi. Break the news. Well, it's a big development. Nobody seems to be bothered in the last 48 hours on what exactly happened in that big meeting in which only a statement came out from the Israeli Prime Minister's office saying that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu briefed Ajit Doval on the developments that have been happening since 7th October terrorist attack in southern Israel and also the humanitarian aid that has been given to Gaza and the situation in Gaza ever since Israel launched the, those attacks. The big talking point now is that we are learning that NSA Ajit Doval discussed a possible ceasefire between Israel and Hamas during the holy month of Ramazan. And this is a big development because already as we know, during the Russia-Ukraine conflict where more than 22,000 Indians were stranded there, there was only one day, less than one day, six hour long pause. Can I say, is India, are you saying, are you saying Aditya, is India negotiating a ceasefire? Is Prime Minister Modi playing that important role of a statesman quietly sending his emissary first to ensure that the basic nuts and bolts are in place? Absolutely. No doubts in my mind because I tracked that situation in Russia and Ukraine very closely. When nobody was helping their nationals, India stood out and helped and rescued 22,000 Indian students going inside the war zone. The diplomats were out there and rescuing them. Similarly, in the Israel, Ukraine, uh, Israel and Hamas context, we now learn that Ajit Doval was there for less than 24 hours. He met Netanyahu, he met his counterparts and other people there and discussed a possible humanitarian pause, a possible ceasefire in the holy month of Ramazan and also discussed how the hostages who are still there, more than 100, can be actually rescued. And apart from that, the economic corridor that uh, you know had a big blow after this southern Israel terrorist attack, the big talking point after the G20 uh, success in New Delhi was also discussed. Okay now, okay, now let me just take you through some visuals of Israel, Gaza. Uh, we have compiled them just to, just to create a sense that there's a war which has been raging there. There's a war which has been raging there. 30,000 Palestinians have died. Thousands are in camp. There's a problem of water. The visuals of destruction of Gaza are too much. Let me play out that bite first and then we'll go back to our discussion. UNRWA is our lifeline. Who will give us food and drink after the war? May Allah help the people. What can I say? For God's sake, we need to eat. Our children are dying of hunger. What's happening to us? God will take our vengeance. We have suffered a lot. We have to spend four to five hours here to get some salty water and fresh water. Some people don't even have money to buy fresh water. And I'm also joined by Lev Aaron, Israeli columnist and a journalist, a former coordinator, India-Israel Parliamentary Friendship League. He joins me directly from Israel. Uh, Lev, how are you? Very nice to have you on my show. Uh, my colleague Aditya Rajkol, Namaste Lev. Uh, my colleague Aditya Rajkol has just broken down the news to us. And that news is that it was not just another visit. Certain more important things were being discussed. And that one of the, apart from the larger ambit, was ceasefire. Look, I think the main importance of the visit is that um, since the war, we hardly saw Indians and uh, Israelis who meet each other. And this is after two, 10 years of Modi that we felt that the relationship um, is blooming. So I feel that ceasefire is an issue, terrorism is an issue, but also giving Israel the feeling that even if now Modi and Netanyahu cannot meet because of the war and because of the election campaign in India. Still, all the gates of, for us Israelis are open in India. I think this is the main reason and this is also the reason why it was a 24-hour visit. 
what are the impediments to cease fire? Can we account for it? And what are the challenges for uh, Ajit Doval to iron them out if India can play, uh, India is playing that role? See, firstly, I'll say that I completely agree with my friend Lev that ever since the southern Israel terror attacks, India had verbally condemned terrorism. India had verbally said that they are with Israel, even though they are helping with humanitarian aid the people of Gaza. But at the same time, they were not seen together. You know, at no multilateral or a bilateral, uh, you know, did we see them coming together, apart from some uh, private events. So this is the first time that a high-level leader in the last more than five months has visited Israel and actually shown a verbal, a physical support uh, to the government of Israel, both Ajit Doval and Benjamin Netanyahu standing together. Apart from that, ceasefire would be a concern, but certainly a difficult road ahead because there are still quite a few hostages who are still there in the custody of the Hamas terrorists in Gaza. At a time when it's been more than five months and the hostages are still there, how will Israel agree to a ceasefire is the biggest question. Yes, there have been humanitarian pauses for a day, for two days, for a few days, but a long-term ceasefire looks unlikely at a time when Biden is also suggesting that there it should be a few weeks long ceasefire. Uh, it's obviously a big question mark because several hostages, many of them women, are still in the custody of Hamas and it doesn't seem like that Hamas is going to end uh, its reign of terrorism against the innocent Jews and Israeli citizens. Lev, to you, I know it's a very short discussion. Uh, the destruction has been immense. Israelis have died, more than 30,000 Palestinians have died. Uh, don't you think that there has to be some sort of peace? Uh, I mean to say it's very easy for me to sit in Delhi and say life must go on. But I don't think uh, it's wrong to say that there has to be some peace. No, thank you. Uh, first of all, it is legitimate that you sit in Delhi and you ask these questions. And we are asked by all the foreign media, and um, I think it is okay. Uh, second thing, um, a deal was almost there by Qatar, by Egypt, by Israel, by the US, and even by Hamas, who sit in Qatar. So the uh, the only problem was those Hamas uh, commanders who were inside Gaza in Rafah. They felt that during Ramzan, during Ramadan, Israel will have to give them more perks uh, to avoid the clash with Arab countries. Uh, at least as far as we are concerned now, I don't think that their banking on Arab countries were, uh, was correct because right now, Israel is fighting during Ramadan the same way it was fighting two, three days back. Aditya, uh, I'm say, uh, you know, with Ramzan, people were hoping that the things would change. But things have not changed. The dialogues took place in uh, Cairo, the dialogues took place in various other countries. Why do you think that breakthrough has not arrived? Well, the simple reason is that Israel has been repeatedly saying that these are not things of the past. The kind of the damage that Israel suffered on 7th of, uh, you know, this particular terror attack that happened uh, in October clearly indicated that a new paradigm has been created, which demands new kinds of responses. That's why a new response was categorically made evident by Israel by completely taking over Gaza, uh, you know, putting most of the civilians across uh, in Rafah and trying to eradicate Hamas completely. Will that happen soon? Will they take a few more months is something to be seen. But it doesn't seem that Israel is in any mood to change its behavior until and unless hostages are really released. There might be few days of ceasefire, few hours of ceasefire on uh, you know, humanitarian grounds, but I don't see a long pause clearly at a time when the hostages are still suffering and Hamas is uh, not relenting, not ready to abide by any principles of war uh, and, you know, on the humanitarian basis, leave these hostages. So there is this uh, kind of a negotiation that will continue only, okay. but there will be international pressure, a new paradigm would be created. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But let me put that picture because it's time to close this discussion because that's the picture which, uh, which is very important, the news which Aditya Raj call has broken on News 9 Live that what, what was the meeting all about? And Aditya is saying that India is trying its best to broker, or I would use the, uh, the word broker the deal, to bring some sort of an arrangement in which ceasefire can exist. Because without ceasefire, I think life would be a living hell for those who are in the Gaza Strip. 
and then it continue would continue to destabilize the world.